wedding season is in full swing and our first guest is an expert on timeless bridal style. Her designs have been worn by celebrities like Julia Roberts, Halle Berry and Selma Hayek and appeared in motion pictures like American Wedding and The Hangover. <laughs> Here to tell us about her career in the fashion industry and the latest in wedding gown twin trends is renowned bridal designer Amsala Abera. Welcome. Oh, Amsala, welcome. Well, thank so, you. Wedding thank you for season having is me. here. Yep. <laughs> is this time of the year just crazy for you? I, I think it's actually crazy all the time <laughs> because we do different things. This is just a wedding season for the bride to wear, but in terms of making it and designing it, it's just way, you know, all, all year round. So That's it's true. Pretty, yeah, it is. Uh, because a lot of these dresses are ordered six to eight months exactly, in advance. Exactly, exactly, mm -hmm. wow. yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so is it true that the first dress that you ever designed was actually for yourself? Yes. You gotta tell us that story. Well, this is in, you know, in the 80s. Mm -hmm. that, that I really have to really talk about the, the era because at that oh, time yes. things are so overdone and so much beating and all I wanted was just a very simple dress and, and big really poofy put a shoulders big, big, and all that. It's oh. all beautiful but that wasn't for me. Yes. So end up making my dress and I was an assistant designer for sportswear company then. Uh, so I made my own dress and then right after that I keep thinking it, it has to be other people beside me who really want something simpler mm -hmm. than this. So no business idea. I'm a, to this day, I'm horrible in business anyway. So I mean, a little bit better, but. You're doing really so, well. So <laughs> you figured I, I, out something, I'm sorry. I have a lot of people <laughs> who help me on that, okay. on that too. So, but anyway, uh, so I, I uh, decided to really do custom. And uh, it was, you know, I wasn't sure in like the first time, you know, I, I put an ad on a magazine. And I wasn't sure whether I'm going to get 100 calls a day or nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, luckily, enough for me to, you know, to keep myself busy, but that's how I started. Why were you willing to take the risk? It wasn't a big risk I was taking, is actually, because it was, you know, at that time, I really invested very little. Okay. And it really just really the passion is really what forced me to do it. Mm -hmm. And it was a lot of work. I did it myself. I, I did my pattern myself. I cut it on the floor. Uh, from my apartment, so the risk was little, but it, I kept going because I really, you know, I love, I love fashion, yeah. and um, and I'm just so glad that I I did that. Mm. Well, your gowns have been described as timeless and forever modern, and actually, you've been credited with reinventing the modern day wedding gown. So, how would you describe your look? The Amsala look mm -hmm. is very classic, yeah. but need to be very also current and modern. And mm -hmm. you know, that balance is always very yeah. important. So uh, I, I think it's just a, it's a classic and clean. It would be the, the description of my aesthetic. Mm -hmm. Okay. And when did you know that you were onto something? When did you know that you'd created something that a number of people would want, that a number of people would feature in boutiques and on television and in films? You know, earlier on, people, especially editors, are really, really excited about mm -hmm. that. You know, when they wanted to make the, when they get married, they come to me. So it was, although the business, the, sorry, the business was small, a lot of encouragement yeah. so early on. So that really kept, you know, really kept me um, uh, excited. Yeah. Uh, I, I think uh, it's a very gradual growth. You know, I don't think I felt that I was a success overnight. And you know, this is over 20 years, <laughs> so it's not. Uh, but but it was uh, it was gradual, which is good in a way. But it seems like there's a lot of pressure in the bridal gown industry because it's such an important day for women, especially the bridezillas. How do you deal with them? <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, I don't want to call them bridezilla, which is so But some sad. are. But I even if they are, because that. they're demanding, they want the right thing. I know you're right. But, <laughs> but I don't. I'm sorry, I, I was a bride. <laughs> and you were a bridezilla? I was a little, not quite bridezilla, but <laughs> yeah. it was very emotional. Let's yes, put it like that. That's, like that. that's very also emotional. true. It, well, I, I don't work in the store so I really yeah. don't deal with the bride but even when I find someone who's really really demanding I really honestly and I'm not being phony about it I get it the pressure is so much yes. to look your absolute best pressure from family pressure from your peers it's just so it and it's expensive the whole thing you know that that mixture of that I can understand when brides are 
really crazy about it. And I do like, you know, if you come to our store, mm -hmm. the rule is at any time, and I really mean it, it's a very calm environment. It is mm -hmm. so critical for our store to be almost zen-like, and I like it that way, you know, even if they're stressed out, and they get calmer, you mm -hmm. know, just like don't add stress more to them. That's so I and it we don't have that much so of a good too. <laughs> exactly. It always smells so good. Yeah. Okay, so how does a woman know when she's found the right dress? And what advice do you have for young brides out there who are looking for that perfect gown? I think to start with, to look for the the right gown, look in the magazine first, and really mm -hmm. just gotta you know make you know familiar yourself with the designers you like. Mm -hmm. You know, many times I think it's really important. You know, designer who speak for you right. always is a is is a good you know is a good thing. Once you select it, uh, go to a uh, bridal salon. Please go with a fewer people that you trust so yes. that they can really edit stuff for you because otherwise the, the craziness come when you try 100 dresses. Oh, yeah. You don't need to do all that. Just mm. like do your homework first, try a different silhouette, and then stick to that. And uh, uh, there was a second question you asked. I forgot. Uh, uh, no, <laughs> One you, was just you, you, that was yeah, 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 yeah. And now right now everyone's trying to figure out what Kim Kardashian is going to wear down the aisle. Are there certain trends that are hot right now that we can kind of give us an inkling of what she may pick? She may, I don't know what she's going to pick, right. but I think, <laughs> I, I think. What should she pick? I, yeah. What should she pick? I, I think I would say with Kim, you know, I know everybody knows her figure, mm -hmm. and uh, I think she should work anything just, in, it really just, it flatter her. So I think, I think just, you know, flattering is a very important thing. It's just the silhouette is very important. Yeah. I, I uh, in terms of a trend, which I showed in my collection, all the three collections last, you know, this, this, you know what, about a month yeah, ago, a month was it ago. that? Yeah, about a month ago. Back detail, back interest is really, really just yeah. very strong, which I love it too, because it's very, you know, very modest in the front and then just showing the surprise in the back. So that's love good. It. Lace still is strong. I think it's just, uh, it's just strong still. And it's classic. It's, it's classic, mm -hmm. that's exactly what it is too, yeah. Oh, I love So you grew up in Ethiopia, is that right? Yes. Did you want to be a designer back then? How did you come to this world of fashion? Well, now again, I feel like I'm the 18th century, but <laughs> it was like I grew up, whatever it went was. It's designers, it's not even just like consider us sinisters in those days. You know, it's not mm. really, in Ethiopia, it's not something that you would consider a very respectful uh, profession. Yeah. Yet now, yes. Um, for me, I always love fashion. I always mm. look at stuff and make myself, you know, yeah. I got myself in trouble for cutting a really nice dress and making it, you know, <laughs> shorter or whatever. A mini? A mini bad exactly. girl. Bad, bad girl. girl. <laughs> so, so, but I, 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 I think uh, here is when I really found out that that's what I really wanted to do. Mm. And this is after graduating in political science. Wow. and went to fashion, yeah. So what do you tell your family when you say, I want to be a designer? What do they say to you? I, you know, by then, I think there was enough separation. They st trust me alone, you know, had it been you know, at home. I mean, th when they sent me, I actually, they were pretty liberal because I, I say that I wanted to study commercial art. Mm -hmm. I had no idea what commercial <laughs> art was to begin with. I got here. I'm so bad at it, so I don't, because I wasn't, I mean, I was only, you know, growing up in Ethiopia sheltered and really don't know about profession, you know, mm. we, you know, no, no such thing said, I want to be this when I grow up. Yeah. I mean, just your parents don't, don't ask you that question, so we don't have the same way, an American way, mm -hmm. like a six-year-old always wanted to be a fire mm. fighter or uh, a doctor at age four, mm -hmm. but in Ethiopia, you just grow up yeah. and get the job you get. That's true. Well, that's same, really, it's the same it's different. way in Nigeria Yeah, it as really well. is. Yeah. You don't dream. Yeah. You just do it. It's <laughs> changing now it's, oh, in the modern world. Yeah. Absolutely, yes. Well, Absolutely. Well, after you moved from Ethiopia to America to study, a revolution broke out in your hometown. You were separated from your family. What was that experience like? Uh, yeah, no, that's, that's, I think I probably would say that's the dark, you know. I, I don't know if I can talk without being too emotional about it, mm -hmm. but... Um, anyway, it always gets me. Uh, four, four months after I got here, a revolution broke out in Ethiopia, and uh, my father became a political prisoner. And for seven years, luckily, he was out when there's about, you know, it, it was just I'm the lucky one that he wasn't killed or... Uh, so it was difficult to be separated from, from your family for 12 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, but now uh, now things are good. 
Well, glad to hear it. Well, oh, I'm getting emotional. I know, it is, it was. Yeah. And, 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 and it was tough, and it also tough, I think, you know, uh, again, at home, we're so sheltered. Although mm -hmm. when I came here, I was 19. I was like 10, you know, emotionally, because it's just like your parents do everything, or you ask your parents to do. It's the someone think for you, and then here I am in this big world with foreign language, foreign food, foreign everything, including the weather. So for me to adjust that, and to have a political, you know, so for my father to become a political prisoner and. Uh, and my country to just be upside down, that was, uh, but you survive, human. We really, yeah, yeah. when something is being given to us, somehow we take it. You're so yeah. resilient, yeah, right? Yeah, right, yeah. truly. Really. You've yeah. done an amazing yeah. job surviving yeah. and yeah. becoming successful. Oh, surviving and thriving. So, thank yes. you, thank and you so much. And is it true you have a, uh, some other diffusion lines as well? Is Kenneth Poole and Christos as well? Yes, okay. it's, it's actually, there, there are three collection. I mean, one is Amsale, the mm. Kenneth Poole, quickly I can say it. It's, it's for someone who's absolutely dramatic, over the top okay. kind of girl. It's just the opposite of Amsala. Okay. And which I love yeah. doing that because it's almost like, you know, it's, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, it's just over like the a top, little bit over glamour, the top. Glamour, yeah, yeah, you beyond. Do, ritzy and beyond, exactly, <laughs> yeah. that's a good word. Um, so that's for the, uh, the Kenneth Poole. And the Christos is very soft and very romantic mm. and, and, and softer. So I have three collections. And really not by price point, they're divided mm -hmm. by aesthetic. So we have okay. like for three different brides. Yeah. And, so. and bridesmaid, um, we do, which is really, which I'm so proud of our bridesmaid because we, we really, really um, Respect it and take care of it. It's almost oh. it's it's uh, it's it's a beautiful line. Okay. Mm, and your store's on Madison, correct? Yes. Madison and Six, 60, 625 Madison 625 Avenue Madison. between 58 and 59. Yes. All, All right. right. Thank well. you. Thank you so much. And if you hear any word about what Kim Kardashian is going to wear, you tell us first, okay? okay? <laughs> All right, let us know. <laughs> Thank you so much. And or, or, oh, sorry. Continue success, I was going to so say. Much. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. And you're watching Arise Entertainment 360. Thank <laughs> you.